Farmers have been living with this environmental change in the crops they grow since the beginning of time. But what biotech does is it takes living organisms and all the tools that we have at our disposal to alter plants and devise solutions to problems. In the mid-1990s, North Carolina cotton farmers faced a serious crisis. Insect infestation and rampant weed growth were wiping out cotton fields, devastating one of the state's most important cash crops. But with the help of Agricultural Biotechnology, or Ag Biotech, farmers were able to combat these problems and grow cotton in areas where it previously was not possible. As a result, the industry not only bounced back, but flourished. Although cotton has traditionally been used for clothing, cooking oil, and livestock feed, scientists and companies are providing the opportunity to expand cotton's utility. For example, new biotech cotton varieties have the potential to provide protein that could feed people on a global scale. Companies have even created environmentally friendly packing material from cotton that could take the place of synthetic packing material. But cotton isn't the only crop benefiting from ag biotech. Scientists at SoyMeds, a company in North Carolina, are producing proteins in soybeans that could change the way we receive our medicines. This technology really is revolutionary. We can generate vaccines that can be used to vaccinate orally and because of the high protein content in seeds, you can generate millions, if not tens of millions of doses in a very small area, such as an enclosed uh, greenhouse acre. Seeds can be converted into powder and stored for many years. They have a very stable shelf life. If we were to have a good vaccine candidate to treat malaria in uh, third world countries, we could add a little bit of water to these uh, uh, plastic vials of soy milk powder and uh, reconstitute it and drink it and that's your vaccine. There's an enormous potential for the future of soybean and the different types of things we can do because it is such an ideal system to use. Ag Biotech is also bringing new jobs to North Carolina. Canadian-based company Medicago constructed its first manufacturing facility in Research Triangle Park. Scientists there are creating health opportunities in unexpected places, using tobacco leaves to produce 10 million doses of H1N1 vaccine in a month. Biotechnology is improving other areas of agriculture as well. Advanced Animal Diagnostics in Durham, North Carolina, is using ag biotech to create new tools for improving food safety by developing rapid diagnostic tests for mastitis, an infection of the milk-producing glands in the dairy cow. If you can get to the subclinical mastitis before it becomes a clinical case, then you can manage the cow better, the cow will be healthier, her production will be, last longer, and you'll have better quality of milk. We believe that this is just the first fruit of rapid diagnostics, on-farm diagnostics for all kinds of diseases and for all kinds of things like even uh, bioterrorism. With a great pipeline of research, vibrant ag biotech companies, and a trained workforce, North Carolina is primed for a bright economic future. We're excited about agricultural biotech and what it can help agriculture and farmers and consumers in our state uh, do as we look forward. The ag biotech industry is uncovering a world of opportunities that will help feed, clothe, fuel, and heal the world. It was the driving force behind the revival of cotton in North Carolina. Now, ag biotech is extending its reach providing a platform for advancements in medicine and food safety, and offering possibilities that will improve quality of life for people around the globe. When you look at the whole range and breadth of what agriculture can do for us in North Carolina, it is well beyond just food on the table. 